best fests. Fun fest. Way the best fest ever. Awesome. So, we, we're ready to rock? We're on time, ready to go? Yeah, yeah, we, we don't see your face though. You di you disappear from the face of Earth. Why, why can't we see your face? Yeah, I don't think you can get my face and the slides. Okay, well, well, yes. From time to time, just like show your face just to prove it to you. Otherwise, Gary might have some bad dreams tonight. <laughs> well, I'm going to be talking, so hopefully my voice should give away a bit of this me. All right, all so, right. You know, I'm not that good looking. That needs to stare at me all the time, I'm sure. You must have sometimes got a nice rainbow on your face. <laughs> I don't have the rainbow today. I should have put the rainbow on. I blame my daughter for that. She wanted me to be a rainbow princess. Yeah, you see, you don't look like yourself anymore. <laughs> I need the rainbow. Cool, we, we ready to go? Yes. Great, let's do it. Okay, so yes. Thank you, best. Yes, sponsors. Yay, sponsors. Yay, yeah. sponsors. All of them. Awesome. Very nice. Excellent. Right, so welcome to the rather long named the Adding Platform Specific Magic to Cross Platforms and Reforms apps. So what we're going to talk about is how we can do a little bit of magic to allow us to build five star apps. Forms is great, but it doesn't quite give us everything. And we can do a little bit of magic to make that happen. So, boring stuff, for those of you who don't know me, and I know some of you do, I'm Jim. Hello! I work in New Zealand. I'm a mobile developer for a company called Erode. I'm often seen wearing their shirts because they give them to me for free. And I'm also available all over the internet at Jim Bob Bennett. So Twitter Jim Bob Bennett, Jim Bob Bennett .io is my uh, blog, GitHub Jim Bob Bennett is where I am. And blatant plug time. Everyone ready for blatant plug? I wrote a book. So we published by Manning, so you know it's a high quality title because it's published by Manning, they do fantastic books. It's all about building native cross-platform Xamarin apps with MVVM. It's native. I know today's talk is forms. This book is all about the native, all about the MVVM from idea to store, well-tested production quality app. And I can give you a discount. If you go to xamarin.jdb.io, use code FCCBennett and you get 37% off the book price. Special discount from MonkeyFest. So I'm going to pause here, just give everyone a chance to go and buy a copy. <laughs> you got one? All bought it? Yeah. Excellent. Cool. So we're here today to talk about Xamarin Forms, the one native UI to all for. So because I can't see you at the moment, so I've got my slides up, with a show of voices, who uses Xamarin Forms? Shout yay. Yay. Bro! Woohoo! Yay! Awesome. Who doesn't? <laughs> Okay, a couple of voices that don't use forms. Who's never even heard of Xamarin Forms? No one. Excellent. I gave this talk at NDC Sydney. Someone said they'd never heard of it and got up and left. So uh, looks like we're all talking. Cool. So Xamarin Forms, yeah. the idea is it's one native UI to Baltimore. I know this sounds a bit Lord of the Rings, but I do live in New Zealand, so I have to do this. So the idea of Forms is you write build UI once, and it runs everywhere. It runs on iOS, it runs on Android, it runs on UWP, with all the new stuff that's coming in preview, it runs on WBF, Mac, Linux, Tizen, and even Unity. Someone's created Unity back in forms. And this is great. It, this idea has been around for a while. Java tried it with AWT and Swing, right once, run anywhere, and the Java one sucked really badly. Forms has made it because of the underlying architecture of forms, which is you declare a control of forms, you get a native control on the platform. It looks like a native app, it works like a native app because it is a native app. Then it means you can get your apps to market really quickly. We've seen this at E-Road, we've just we released an app called Inspect to allow truck drivers to inspect their vehicles, make sure the vehicles are safe and they're not going to break big down or have brake failures and kill people. And we managed to get the app from idea to store in two months because we wrote our UI once and it was out on iOS and Android in two months. And I'm sure we've all seen this, it's got to the point where Forms is Xamarin. If you go to Stack Overflow, you'll see people saying, I have this problem with Xamarin. And you ask them, do you mean Forms? Do you mean Android? Do you mean iOS? And they go, with Xamarin. They don't even know that there's a native site. Xamarin always talks Forms first, so it's got to the point, literally, Forms is Xamarin. And that's cool. We love Forms. So the big upside of Forms, it runs on all platforms. Yay! The downside to Forms, it runs on all platforms. Power comes with a price. <laughs> so when the forms guy has built forms, and it is awesome, I do love forms, but when they built it, they had to go 
the lowest common denominator model. For things to work everywhere, they had to pick a subset that works on all platforms. They couldn't deliver everything, but some things don't make sense. So a good example of this is on iOS, there is an option you can set on labels and uh, text fields to say, if the text doesn't fit on screen, shrink the font. On Android, there's no such thing. Can't do it. On Windows Phone, this was the original version of Forms, they like to have the text hanging off the side of the screen for some reason. I don't know why Windows Phone did that, but it'd be hanging off the side of the screen. So each platform is different. So there's no way that Forms could surface that feature. You can't have an option that says, on iOS, please shrink the text, but do nothing on Android to make Windows fall off the side of the screen. It's not a good proxy. It doesn't work. So they had to pick a subset that works across everything. So only the features that worked on all platforms were available, and they made it simple to make sure the basics were covered. So it's not the full power that you get out of the native app. It's a subset. It's a good enough subset for most things, but it's not good enough for everything. So with a show of voices, because I can't see your hands, who here works with a designer? Yes. Yeah, ooh, yeah, ooh, yes. <laughs> Everybody's raising their arms. They're very excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shout, I, can't, I can't hear you raise your arms. Shout out loudly. Yeah. So a lot of us work with designers. And designers are great. They use science of UI and all this stuff with visual hierarchies and loads of stuff I don't understand to design some gorgeous apps. And one particular thing that designers seem to love is typography. So I work with a designer. He's really good, and he loves his typography. He loves his font weights. He likes having some text as a light font, some as a medium font, some as a heavy font. And it makes great big looking apps. And here's just one example to take from Airbnb, rather than from where I am, take from Airbnb. So if you look at this, there's a lot of different types of typography on there. Featured destinations is quite old text. And then you look at the Los Angeles, London, Florence, underneath. That's even even bolder still, it's quite blocky. And then you go to the entire of the Lost Union, it's quite, a, quite light. So you've got these different weights, different colours, different ways of expressing the typography. And that's cool, and that can make really, really, really stunning your eyes. And I have this, I have my designer come to me, and he says, Jim, you need to design that, and I want all the fonts on it to be light. A nice, light font. Except for maybe this header, I want this a nice medium font. So I say to him, I say, aha, I. I'm a Xamarin Forms developer. You can have regular or bold. That's it. Regular, bold, regular. That's it. And he says to you, Jim, you're lying to me, aren't you? I know that on iOS I can get ultra light, thin, light, regular, medium, semi bold, bold, heavy, black. On Android I get thin, light, regular, medium, bold, black, black, condensed, light, condensed, condensed, but I get all these amazing fonts, this amazing typography. And I say, aha, I'm a Xamarin Forms developer. You get regular or bold. <laughs> and he's not particularly pleased with this. He says, I want to use a light font. He gives me what he wants. Forms doesn't. Forms gives me um, yeah, it's just a regular font. I have a regular font, I have a bold font. I can't get light, I can't get black, I can't get all these different combinations. But he wants it. As far as he's concerned, we are not going to sell a million copies of our app and take over the world, be the next unicorn, Instagram, Snapchat, thingy, whatever. Without the right weights of fonts. So, how can we do this? Well, luckily, we can do this. Although Forms has its limitations, it also has its ways that we can get under the hood, access the native capabilities of our apps, do the things that we want to do. And the two ways we can do this are effects and custom renderers. And that is what we're going to talk about in this session. We're going to look at how we can use effects custom renderers to allow us to get under the hood, get hold of platform-specific controls, and cock about with them as much as we like. I'm going to do it using an example of front weights, but all this applies to pretty much anything you could want to do. I'm going to show this, and this is going to be quite code-heavy, uh, and the code I'm going to do is mainly going to be iOS, it's only going to be iOS, simply because I don't have time to put it straight on all platforms. But everything I talk about, applies to every single flavor of forms. iOS, Android, GWP, WPF, Tizen, Linux, Unity, whatever. It applies to everything. So, without further ado, let's kick off with effects. Now, effects are designed to be a light
lightweight way for you to hook into the underlying controls and get in there and tweak them. So, have a quick look at how Forms works. The way Forms works is we have a Forms control that we define in our cross platform code, in our currently our PCLs, but not standard libraries, very soon on preview. We define a common a control in our core library. We use, for example, entry. And then, when our app runs on an iOS device, we get the UI text field. When it runs on Android, we get an edit text. We get the native control. That's how forms work. It's kind of got a wrapper around everything, an abstraction layer on top. And what an effect does is an effect allows us to build two little hooks. We build one hook into the cross-platform code, and then one hook into the platform-specific code. A bit like this. So we construct two parts. One part hooks in cross-platform code, one part hooks in the platform-specific code. And because we're hooked in the platform-specific code, we can go there and we can tweak all the things and we can start adjusting our fault rate or doing whatever it is we want to do. So the best way to sum all that up is to actually write some code. So let's write an effect to make our fault rates nice and low. Back. Okay, so can you all see my Visual Studio for Mac? Yay, it's yes. beautiful. Yeah, it's have, oh, have you got beautiful. Enfractor on it? Of course I've got Enfractor on it. All right, just checking. <laughs> of course. Well, Which is a great question. tool. <laughs> Metro Beats, bye. Um, so what I've got here is I've got the app. This is our you know, billion-selling, world-class, we're going to take over the world app. And it's got two labels, an entry, and three buttons. And my designer has said, well, it doesn't look very good. This what's your name? That must be in a light font. Really, really light font. Otherwise, we're not going to sell copies of the apps. And the entry, this name, entry box. That's also going to be in a light font. Jim. Make it happen, Jim. Make it happen. Jim, Jim, Jim. So, Jim, 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 one second. Can you make your code like, I know you like the dark theme, but here for the audience, the light theme will be nicer. So if you can make it like, well, yeah, that's. Well, that or just like make it twice going to be looking pretty good as well. If I can make it the. I can make it the light thing. Yep. Yeah. So give me a second to write that code. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's all right. No worries. Oh, is that is that the trucks in question? These are some of the trucks. This is one of our customers' trucks. Right. So one of the big trucks in the states. So it's got our hardware in it. Very nice. Mm. And yeah, so like this video studio is taking a bit of time to load. There we go. Okay. And let's load the project. You'll notice there's a tempting update here and I really want to install it, but I can't because yeah. Didn't want to scuffer everything for today. Right. Come on, hurry up and load. But I didn't realize how, uh, uh, how much problem the dark theme would have on the screen. So, uh, no worries. So that's what I was saying. We've got, a, we've got this UI, it's got two labels, an entry, three buttons, and my designer is telling us one of the labels and one of the entries to have a light font. And we're going to achieve that by using an effect. As soon as Visual Studio goes up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that better? Much, much better. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. All right. A little. Uh, can you increase yeah. the front a little as well? Wait. Um. Can you put some background music as well and just like <laughs> put some snacks? <laughs> burger for me. Two cheeseburger. Yeah. Okay. Um. You want a front bigger? Yeah. We are a very demanding audience, isn't it? Oh, yes. You are very demanding. I know. <coughs> okay, let's so look. And you've marked up my preview, and that's going to be. Right. Okay, let's. Yeah, 24 shots. How's that? Oh. Oh, good. That better? Good, everybody can see now? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, everybody's very happy. They're smiling so much. Right, and my previewer is now playing silly whatnots and complaining. And that's going to be a real problem because um, I need the preview for things to work. 
You've broken everything for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, only, it's the audience. Audience. Blame the audience. <coughs> the whole audience. Okay, for some reason, I'm finding my X code. If it's just starting to install an update, I'm not going to be best pleased. No. Um, no, X code is there. Okay. Um, there are three errors. You know what you've done? You <laughs> okay. Um, since restarting, I can, it's now broken my ability to compile my app. Bad audience. Uh, this is worth trying. Bad audience. Bad audience. This is going to be quite embarrassing now. Yeah? Um, okay, let's try. Let's just try bringing Android instead. Let's just. <laughs> Reload Android, unload iOS. And hopefully now, the preview app will actually do something. So it's, this was working absolutely fine. I did a run through this a couple of hours ago, and the bad audience broke it. Okay, so hopefully while this, is, this, should, this should, um, should build and the preview should update, and worked in that, let's write some code. So for an effect, we have two pieces. We have a cross-platform piece that we put inside our PCL, and we have a platform-specific piece. So if I start with the cross-platform piece in my PCL, I create a class, and I'm going to call it Light Font Effect. Okay. Now, when I'm building the cross-platform side of things, what? My Visual Studio is not, not very happy. When you go across the platform side of things, there's really not very much we have to do. What we do is we create a class that derives from root and effect, which is buried inside. Uh, <laughs> 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 you want to switch it off and on again? <laughs> Being down in forms. Yeah, hey, come on. You yeah, have broken my computer. <laughs> Remotely, it's the first. Are, are you trying okay. to make us feel bad or something? I am. I'm very much trying to make you feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's just unload the iOS project just to try. But, but, uh, okay, so. You're not safe, which means you can't save your stupid computer. <laughs> right, so on the top of the platform side, we derive the class from routing effect. And routing effect has a base class constructor that takes an effect ID. So I'm just going to drop in a string for now, and I'll talk about this in more detail in a bit. So general band light font effect. And really, this is all we need to do on the cross platform side. That's it, I just get an effect. And then to use my effect, in my XAML, uh, okay, hopefully it's says so in my XAML, I can actually start using my effects inside my code. Every single Xamarin Forms element has a property in it called effects. And that effects property is a list of effects that I can have my effects. So I can say for my label here, uh, I go label dot effects. <coughs> this is, my computer's now crippled. Absolutely fine. <sighs> um, so in here, I can say right, label effects, and I can Start typing, and I just add my effects to that collection. So that's my cross platform side now. I've got an effect, I've added it to my label. Now, one thing that's cool about effects is effects are control agnostic. I can have an effect to any control, so I can literally take the same code I've got and apply it to an entry. So I've got my label, I've added an effect called light font effect, I've got an entry, I've added an effect called light font effect. Done. The interesting side of things comes when I start building my platform-specific implementation. This is where things get fun. So on the platform-specific side, on my Android app, I'm going to add a new file. And I'm going to call this Light Font Effect Droid. And on the platform-specific side, I my drive a class from Platform Effect. And then hopefully my IntelliSense will work. Yay! A Platform Effect is an abstract-based class with two methods on it. We have on attached and on detached. Now what happens, if you look at my XAML here, I have added my control, so my effect, to the effect selection on my control. 
When I add this effect, the effect is constructed, is added to the effects collection, and behind the scenes, forms will call this unattached method of my platform specific implementation. If I then remove it from the collection, it calls on detached. Now, what makes this quite useful is some of the properties available to me. So in unattached, I have a property called element. And this element is of type Xamarin Forms element. This is the Xamarin Forms control that my effect is attached to. So in this particular case, it is the label. In this case, it is the entry. So from my platform specific code, I've got access to the Forms element. Okay, so far so good. But what's even more cool is this property called control. And control, you'll see, is an Android views view. And for all those who've done native programming or dicked around with the fun stuff under the hood in Xamarin Forms, you will know this is the base class for all the Android UI controls. They all derive from Android views view. So this, this control, is our underlying platform specific control. We have now got access to the native control and we can do what we like with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some code because I'm too lazy to type. Um, and bring in some using directors. And what I'm saying here, if my control is text view and both label and entry, the native type underlying native type of the text view. Labels are text views, entries are edit text, which derives from text view. If I'm at the text view, must be a C sharp seven syntax there, I set the typeface to be sans serif light, which gives me a nice lightweight font. So if you could see my previewer, which you can't because you guys have broken my Visual Studio, you would see the font weight changed. So I'm going to have to build this and run this and hopefully see if I can get something to show on screen. Otherwise, you're not going to believe me that this works, are you? <laughs> not right? No, you're not going to believe me. Uh, this is oh no, this was working beautifully until I reached that official studio. Of course, now, because it's an Android, it's going to take a nice long time to build. So while this is building, I want you to trust me that this is now giving us a light font of effect on our label and our entry. So now we have a nice light font for those. Nice and easy. So try and picture in your mind. We've got the light, uh, normal font for the first label said hi. A light font for the second label said what's your name? And a light font for the entry for the user to type the name. And then a regular font for three buttons underneath. Just try and picture this, if you will, because I can't show you that. So I show this to my designer. Um, we all, we've worked with designers, we know what designers are like. They like to change their minds, don't they? They tell you this is perfect, and then they change their minds. So my designer, he looks at this and he says, you know what, Jim, we're not going to sell a million copies of this app. It's not going to happen. Because that entry box, I need a much heavier weight font. I need something really heavy, like that, that, the black weight font, the really, really heavy, nice, luxurious, very over-the-top heavy font. We must have that if we're going to sell a million copies on Apple. So, how do I do it? Well, I could write another effect. That's one way to do it. I could write another effect. Or what I could do is I could actually put some properties on my effect. So if I go back to my effect here, I can just add a property. I can go public. I've already created an enum called font type. And I'll call this property font type because I'm not very original when it comes to names. I'm allowed to get it Get on set up. And then what I can do is from my platform specific page, uh, yeah, my, um, my cross platform page, my panel page, I can say my font type, and I can wait for things to catch up, equals back. So I set a property in my XAML on my effect. And then inside my platform specific code, I can then handle that property. Now we saw, as I showed you earlier, we have access to the element, we have access to the control. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the effect. There is no effect property in the platform effect. But we can get this from the element. So I go bar effect equals element. And on the element, there is a collection called effects. And this is our list of effects, and this contains the effect that we've added. 
I can then just do a nice bit of link of type uh, large font effect dot symbol. Now, I know there's going to be one on there because there's no way that we would actually be in the on attached if there wasn't one in the effects section. It has to be there, otherwise it wouldn't be attached. So I do this, I get the effect, and then from this effect I can then read the font type. So I will just take a bit of code, copy and paste it in, two layers of this type, and say so depending on the value of the font type property, I want to affect change the font. And that, I'm going to try and run this on an emulator and see what happens. See, I don't think this emulator is set up to work properly, but we'll try it. We'll see. See what happens. Uh, and hopefully you should see a light font effect and a black font effect. Or you'll see an error if my emulator doesn't work. And that'll be very, very embarrassing and we'll all just pretend it didn't happen and just believe that everything works. Okay. So, while that's building, while that's building, we need to actually talk about the fact it won't work. Where my code is not running, I've got distracted by the fact that some of this isn't going to work. The reason what I've written here is not going to work is because we have got this cross-platform code here that says we have a light font effect. We've got a platform specific class, light font effect droid. Nowhere have we actually told forms that these two are the same thing. We haven't actually told forms that the light font effect droid is the platform specific implementation of the light font effect. We haven't told forms this. How does forms know? So we have to tell forms this. Now, we don't have access to our platform specific code, our droid code, from inside our cross platform code. So instead, forms does everything in a very loosely coupled way with strings. So if you go back to my effect, you will notice I have got this effect ID set inside my base class. And this is a two-part ID, didn't bump that in, dot, white font effect. And this is a very explicit two-part ID. What this ID means is forms will use this first part to work out which assembly to load the platform-specific code from and then it uses the second part to work out which type to use. So I need to, in my code, tell forms what my assembly is and what my effect is. So the way we do the assembly part is a thing called resolution group name. So there is an attribute called resolution group name, define it size only forms, and if my existence, yay! And in, in here, we provide one name for our assembly. And this says to forms, whenever you resolve an effect, if the first part of the effect ID is, do what better, as it's in this example, use this assembly. And this is a property we set once inside our assembly. So more when you set this inside your assembly info.cs or your app delegate or wherever it is you're going to do your single declaration. So you put that out once. And then we need to tell forms as well what our effect is called. So we have uh, another attribute, export effect. We give it the type of our platform specific implementation. So I'll go type of live font effect droid. And then we need to give the name. That's font effect. There we go. And this is how we tell forms how everything works. So let's just get this up and run this and hope this should work. We'll see. So in our base font, Jim? Oh, really? Yeah, honestly, honestly, have you seen that? Yeah. Jim? No, that's <laughs> Jim, Jim. Are you okay? That's the end of the toilet. <laughs> Jim! Alright. He must have heard me or something. Yeah. <laughs> Jim? Jim, Jim, Jim. Let, let's, uh, he'll be back. Uh, oops. Uh, <coughs> I can do it that. I'm not sure. Hey! Hey, you're back! 
Hello? Are yes. You, are you okay? Was there an Hello. earthquake? I don't know what happened there. Eh? Uh, yeah, she just dropped. Yeah, yes, yes. Hey! In the flesh, the man. Cool. Uh, the thing. Yes, cool. Excellent. Let's try to share hey. the screen again to see if everything is fine. I have to share my screen. Yep, it's loading, it's loading, and shebang. Over there. Excellent. Cool. Okay, um, so as I was saying, there are effects. The base class takes an effect ID, and effectively, two part ID, dimplebenet.lightform effect. And then when forms does its magic, it will look for the assembly that's got the resolution group there and sets to dimplebenet. In that assembly, looks for effect, exports as light font effect. So, is this going to work? It's running an emulator, it's running very slowly, but it's doing it. So, this is how we tell forms how to work platform specific piece to cross platform piece. Now, I'm pretty sure some of you are starting to think about the problem of this. We are connecting these two things via a string. We are never explicitly using the code, the, no, never explicitly using this effect, never explicitly using it. Now, those of you who've had fun with the linker in the past are probably thinking, this is going to bite me on the arse, isn't it? And yes, yes, this is going to bite you, because we never explicitly use this class, we just use it in a type of here, so the linker will strip this out. So it's very, very important.
pay to me for not being there. And I do apologise for not being there. I'm going to sacrifice the chicken for dinner gods later on to apologise. This code is up on GitHub, so head to my GitHub page, github.com slash jimbobbennett. The project there is called NDC Platform Specifics. Uh, so I originally wrote it for this for NDC Sydney. You have a look at the code, contact me if you've got any questions about this, buy my book, thank you for answering the discount, you know, please buy my book. Um, and with that, I will leave you unless there is any questions in the yeah, remaining few minutes. Jim, we've got time like, for questions, so if there are any, uh, that would be absolutely cool. Except that the question needs to be spoken really loud. <laughs> yes. Questions. Uh, questions. Wow, you've been you've been very thorough. There's always good questions. You covered everything, every single nook and cranny. I hate Jimmy's also he's known for that. But ah, one question. Speak loud. Speak loud. Super loud. Okay, this is not applicable for third-party controls, right? Is it? Uh, this is not applicable for third-party controls. Question mark. Question mark. Um, yes, yes it is. Yes. It so is. if you're yes, if you're say you go buy some sync fusion controls for example. Or Any other questions? If you want to talk about something completely random. Excellent, then it's a wrap. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. That was absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you, audience, for just breaking his computer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all, folks. Right? Oh. I think a big round of applause for Jim.